Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and being glad in it. Good morning, Palestine United Methodist Church. Good morning, Facebook Live world. It's a good day to be alive. What you mean by that, Pastor? I mean that long as the blood is running warm in your body, you still got another chance. We thank God for Jesus this morning. Amen. Before we get started, amen, we had a letter come out this week from the Pandemic Task Force team, and they advised us that they know that the numbers have went down some, but we shouldn't relax our standards. Uh, if we have the resources to gather, we still must gather accordingly to what the CDC guidelines say. Amen. So if uh, social distance, hand sanitizer, wearing our mask, we must do that. We here at Palestine United Methodist Church, we know that we are in the midst of trying to get us, not trying, of getting us a new sanctuary built. So we are in the fellowship hall, so we must make the call on how we must relax and come back into our services. So uh, ideas, trustees, come together, let's find out if we have 10 this week, 10 next week, 10 the fourth Sunday, we can come up with a plan and we can uh, allow ourselves to ease back in our services. Amen. Also, uh, I would like for Palestine United Methodist Church to send uh, us email addresses. Email addresses. We are trying to get a, a Bible study uh, started, and it will be uh, Chrome. Through, uh, through Chrome. I don't know, but I'm going to find out. We're working, trying to get it together right now. But I need email addresses. So text us your email address if you are interested in taking part in our Bible study class. Amen? Amen. This is the second Sunday of Lent. Amen. And we know that Lent is the 40-day period, not including the Sundays, leading up to Easter. On the, in other words, we're on the road to Galilee. We're, 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 we're going there, and you know what happened in Galilee. Not only is this the second Sunday of Lent, this is also the fourth Sunday of Black History Month. And, and we as a people, we don't have to just celebrate four weeks in a year of black history. We should celebrate black history every day of the year. We are part of black history. Black history should be celebrated every day of our life. So this, that being said, let us continue the standard of celebrating those who went before us, those who are right here with us, and those who will come after us right now. Amen. So, all that being said, would you pray with me, please? Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks for the example for the examples of all the patriots that came before us, Abraham, and for all the saints right now who are coming behind us, for those who waited in patience for your promise to come to pass, for those who lived in hope while around them it seemed to be only darkness, for those who witnessed to you when it was not considered the proper thing to do for those who forgot their own selves in their desire to obey your commands and respond to your call upon their lives. Help us today, O oh God, to examine the level of our faith, to look seriously at our resistance to talk about the cross and about sacrifice, and to consider in prayer our reluctance to give up the things of this world, to risk our reputations, our comfort, and our security for the sake of following you, for the sake of witnessing to you. 
for the sake of obeying you. Lord, hear our prayer. And in love, answer. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will make us bold in our faith. By our self-forgiving and our self-denial, help us to make visible to all our brothers and sisters the reality of your power and your care. That power and care that is so often made evident when we confess our weakness and so often conceal from others when we are strong. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for those people who names or faces or needs are resting upon our hearts. We pray for the members of our church whose health is failing as they age right now. For those believers whose families are struggling to deal with, with teenage rebellion, with, with adult confusion, and uncertainty right now in their life. For those who have little or no faith and for who seem to be lost, even though your light shines around them and your word is close to hand, Lord, hear our prayer. And in, in your love, answer our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for those in our family, our church, and our community, and our world, that you bring to our hearts and minds at this time and we hold them up to you with the words of our lips. All these things we pray to through your son Jesus who died that we might live and who lived that we might never die. Amen, amen, and amen. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I thank God for another chance and another opportunity to just stand before God's people one more time. Amen. Man, I'm not going to be long this morning. Amen. It's good to be standing here once again. Amen. Amen. We had a, a black history sermon from our own minister, Joseph Ivey, last week. Amen. The word took me all week long. Amen. Amen. And, and I know that it took you. But be encouraged if it didn't. Because I tell you what, there is a word from the Lord today also. Amen. So turn with me right now to the book of Romans. Romans, the fourth chapter. Amen. The fourth chapter. I will be reading verse 13 through 25. Romans 13, 4, 13 to 25. Amen. Not going to be very long. Amen. And it reads, It was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be the heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by law are heirs, faith has no value, and the promise is worthless, because law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that if it may be by grace, it may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are the law, but also to those who are the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead. And get this, and call things that are not as though they were. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations just as it had been said to him. So shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body 
was good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. righteousness. The word it was called credited to him was written not for him alone, but also for us. Also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him who raised Jesus as our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. I want to speak just for a minute. Pull it out of the 21st verse. Are you fully persuaded in his promises? Are you fully persuaded in his promises? promises. Are you fully persuaded this morning? Do you have a deep down in your soul conviction that whatever God promised, he is able to perform it right now in your life? Do you have a gut feeling right down, deep down that you believe what God said he would do? In his walk with the Lord, Abraham, the Bible says, was fully persuaded that whatever God promised, he was faithful to perform for scripture, declared that he stabbed not at the promises of God. He didn't let anything knock him off track. He didn't wake up with a bad attitude and decided, I'm not going to do what God said to do this morning. He didn't wake up saying, I hate my neighbor. He believed what God had told him to do. And, and, and go, don't go to thinking that, that Abraham knowed everything about God. He didn't. He didn't even know what the law stated. But he believed when God spoke to him. In spite of old age and his wife Sarah being barren, Abraham did not doubt nor waver in his faith when God said that he would have a son and all through the whole world would be blessed through that son and Abraham. Abraham believed even though he was a hundred years old. By faith, Abraham believed God and it was counted into him as righteousness, the Bible said. Abraham was fully persuaded. Abraham was a promised believer. How about you this morning? Do you believe in the promises of God? Do you believe that you are the head right now and not the tail? Do you believe that you are blessed going out and blessed coming back in? Do you believe it this morning? Are you fully persuaded? God has already given his word to us. I believe that our persuasion to the truth of God's spoken word it has to be one of a deep down conviction down in our souls. And it's not one that we believe not of our circumstances. It's one that we believe not because of our past or our present. We got to believe it because God said and he is able to do just what he said he would do concerning me and you. The Bible just said, go back and look what it said. It said, he called things that are not as though they were. Oh, yeah, it may not look like it. It may look like that 
you stuck right now in the midst of nothing. But if you start speaking it in your life, I'm coming out. Start speaking and you may be stuck. Start speaking right now that I'm coming out. I guarantee you, you will come out victorious. Your faith must override your doubt. The same God who promised Abraham, hey, he's still making promises today. It could be that you're not seeing any manifestation in your life because the fact when God makes it, when you hear his voice and God tells you that it's going to happen, you allow doubt to come right in and waver your faith. As soon as God speaks, the power over whatever your circumstances are right now, you allow that doubt to come in and knock you back down. You ask for the favor. You ask God to remove it, and then when he does it, you question him if it's him or not. Come on, somebody. People of God, the Lord your God reminds us today in his word. Jeremiah 33 and 3 said, Call upon me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great things and mighty things, which thou knowest not. When we trust the Lord with all our hearts, and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, he will help us through his Holy Spirit. He will help us. He will help us to reject every thought that would cause us to doubt him. Calls us to doubt his promises concerning us. I'm standing on the promises of God this morning, church. Huh? Somebody right now, they're tempted to doubt the promises of God because of the circumstances, because of the situation that they're in. Now, I have a word for you this morning. Don't do it. Trust God for his word is true. And the Bible said his promises are yea and amen. In Christ Jesus. Ephesians 3 and 20 said, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. What kind of power do you have working in you this morning? Where are you in your faith in God on today? Are you fully persuaded? Or are you in some type of doubt of the promise of, of the Lord our God? He promised to fulfill every promise that he made to you and I. God is not a man that he shall lie. When God gives you a promise, live your life as if it's already manifested. Even in your way. You must live like it's already come to pass. Faith without works is dead. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The difference between some believers and other believers is the simple fact that some choose faith and receive it, and some choose doubt and don't receive because they never believe God for the promise. Are you living right now fully persuaded? Or are you living right now with doubt? Go back. Begin to read your Bible and find out what the promises of God are for you. I am fully persuaded that the word of God concerning me is true and that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Oh, I've been down and I've been out. But God picked me up and he lifted me and set my feet on a solid rock to stay. Amen. God will do the same for you. But you must be fully Persuaded this morning. Are you? If you are not. Today is the day to put your faith. 
in action and cast out the doubt that's holding you back right now. Somebody right there, right now, out in Facebook Live world, casting that doubt away right now, believing in what God has said. When I cast that doubt out, I had a, a, a feeling deep down in my soul that everything was going to be all right. Even though I was in a, in a bad way, I knew that the Holy Spirit had heard my plea and had answered what I had asked him. And I continued to walk in the way of God little by little, bit by bit, piece by piece. God will bring you out. Believe it from Abraham. Abraham didn't have uh, God didn't call Abraham and tell him, I got a big mansion and I got all of this for you. And he didn't know, he didn't know what God had in store for him, but he believed. And he answered, God promises are for you and for me. As I get ready to close today, I want to close, amen, with uh, an old hymn that we sing right here at Palestine United Methodist Church. Now, I'm not going to sing it, but I just want you to listen to the lyrics, the stanzas. I just want you to take note of what the words of this old hymn is saying. Amen. You know, it, 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 it reminds me of the founder of the United Methodist Church. Uh, amen. John Wesley. John Wesley uh, 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 said that uh, uh, he did a sermon years ago that uh, almost Christian, you know, when, and sometimes it's hard to tell a Christian from an almost Christian. Amen. And, and, and the thing that in the end that will you be able to tell them apart is by their faith walk. Amen. John Wesley uh, said that an almost Christian got all the, the, the thing that a Christian has, but faith is what's going to pull them apart. Amen. Amen. This old hymn, uh, I, I, I'm not going to tell you uh, the title of it because I know as I start beginning to, to read it, some of you will know automatic what the title is, but the one that don't, I'll tell you at the end. And it starts, standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I now can see, perfect, present, cleansing in the blood for me. Standing in the liberty where Christ makes free, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promise I cannot fall, listing every moment to the Spirit call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. Are you fully persuaded this morning? Fully persuaded to stand on the promises of God. The name of the hymn in our hymn or that song, standing on the promises of God. I'm standing this morning. I'm standing this morning. Are you standing this morning on the promises of God? God is with us. God is with us. When Jesus went back, 
as he stood there. The Bible says, as I quote, as he stood there, the men stood there looking at him as a cloud took him away. And, and one came up and said, man of Galilee, why are you standing looking now up in the cloud? Amen. He said, because the same way that he went up is the same way he shall return. Jesus is going to return one day. Are you ready and are you fully persuaded in your waiting for him? Amen. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Romans 10 and 9 said if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that Christ Jesus died and on the third day he rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Are you fully persuaded? I love you. There ain't nothing you can do.